Ladies and gentlemen, I've turned on the fasten seatbelt sign and this edition of Rocket Boom is ready to take flight. Please turn off all cell phones, unless that's what you're watching this on, and we remind you that this is a non-fast forwarding flight. Did you feel like you were on an airplane? Try eating six peanuts. Now? I thought so. Aircraft passenger safety instructions have been around as long as there have been flight attendants, over 100 years. In 1912, Heinrich Kubis became the world's first flight attendant on a German airship transportation corporation, Zeppelin. In 1937, he was working on the Hindenburg when it burst into flames while attempting to land in Lakehurst, New Jersey. When the burning Zeppelin was close to the ground, he instructed passengers and crew members to jump out of the windows, and then Kubis himself jumped to safety. No, he didn't tell each one, bye bye those pre-flight safety instructions are important enough to be mandated by the Federal Aviation Administration, but are they really necessary? Let's start with fasten your seatbelts. Edward J. Claghorn patented the seatbelt in 1885, and the first one was used in an airplane by French World War I flying ace Adolphe Pigaud, who was one of the first pilots to fly upside down. Seatbelt use became common in commercial airplanes in the 1930s, and today they're equipped with sensors so the pilot can see who is in danger of flying around inside the plane. So buckle up, bucko. What about this one? In the event of a water landing, your seat cushion can be used as a flotation device. It's true. Aircraft seat cushions are designed to allow a passenger to hang on and float for a short time. However, they won't help keep your head above water and can't be used by more than one person. Fortunately, all flights that travel more than 50 miles from shore are required to have life vests, life rafts, and emergency slides. So pay attention to those instructions. And if you're seated next to an emergency exit, carefully read the instruction card describing your responsibilities in the event of an emergency. If someone else is in that seat, ask yourself, does he or she look like someone who might try to open that door while we're in flight? Just kidding. It's practically impossible to open an emergency door while in flight. The internal cabin is pressurized at a much higher level than the outside, meaning it would take more than Superman strength to pull the door open. But what about D.B. Cooper? In 1971, an unidentified man who bought a ticket under the name Dan Cooper hijacked a plane, was given $200,000 in ransom, and then parachuted out the plane's back door. To this day, no one knows for sure if he survived or where he is. What we do know is that he instructed the pilot to depressurize the cabin, allowing him to open the door. After that incident, planes were equipped with an aptly named DB Cooper switch, which locks the doors when the landing gear is up. I could use some oxygen. Oxygen masks typically drop due to a loss in cabin pressure at above 14,000 feet, where the air is too thin to breathe. Since lack of oxygen can be fatal, follow the flight attendant's instructions. Put the mask on yourself first, then on any children traveling with you. The oxygen supply is limited, so the pilot quickly descends to a level where they're not needed. The cockpit has a separate oxygen system so the crew can keep on flying without looking like a duck who walked into a wall. The pre-flight instruction passengers object to the most is the order to turn off all cell phones and electronic devices. The FAA bans cell phones because of possible interference with the plane's navigation and communication systems, while the FCC bans them to prevent disruption to cell phone towers on the ground. Thanks to an effort spearheaded by Nick Bolton in a series of boisterous articles published in the New York Times, a federal advisory panel is currently re-evaluating the ban now that BlackBerry is dead and you don't hear all that interference making its way into the PA, and aircraft communication systems are better insulated from interference. While many passengers demand their phones, others don't want to be sitting next to someone who's talking for an entire four-hour flight. Especially now that you know you can't grab their phone, open that emergency door, and throw it out. So keep your bags under the seat in front of you, your tray tables in their upright and locked position, and eyes and ears on the flight attendant for those important pre-flight instructions. From New York City, I'm Kegan, and thank you for flying Rocket Boom.